I have a dream job. I make people smile. In 2003, while being a laid-off tech guy, I revisited my childhood friends. I decided to paint these characters that I've been drawing since I was a little kid back in the Philippines and exhibit them at an open studio. To my surprise, people liked them. They smiled, they laughed, and they bought paintings. <laughs> I actually had a hard time sleeping after the open studios because I wanted to find the perfect way for thanking Boston for purchasing all of the artwork. And so, at around 2 a.m., I committed to giving away paintings to show my gratitude to Boston and to spread smiles around the city. In the span of two weeks, 30 paintings were left on park benches, train stations, hospitals, senior centers, and other public spaces with this note attached. <laughs> oh, thank you. Wow. Below the note is my website, bataclan.com, my last name. This is how people are able to contact me. Nothing beats the smiles of people who find paintings. I recently painted murals in North Carolina and I also gave away paintings there. These are pictures of people who found paintings in Raleigh. Here are photos of paintings being given away across the country. That was me at the post office in North Pole, Alaska. I heard that if you write a letter to Santa Claus, chances are your mail will end up here. <laughs> I kind of believe it, because when we walked in there, there were hundreds of letters from um, kids who wrote to Santa. Here are pictures of paintings being given away around the world. Before I show the next slide, I would just like to emphasize that that's the real Eiffel Tower in, in Paris, and this is the fake one in Vegas. Fake, <laughs> real, fake. All right. Machu Picchu was incredible, but it was a bit of a challenge to leave paintings there because you're up 10,000 feet, hardly any oxygen, I had a hard time breathing. <laughs> this was a little easier, the rice terraces in the Philippines, a bit of a hike, more oxygen. Beautiful place. Family, friends, and clients also give away paintings. I'm a full-time artist, and I can't afford to go to all these places. I love this one. <laughs> a client of mine went on a cruise to Antarctica, and she left a penguin painting for a whole bunch of penguins. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Like, like literally cool. <laughs> when paintings are given away in non-English speaking countries, the text gets translated to the local language. Here's one in Tibet. So, I receive lots of messages from people who find paintings. Most are simple thank you notes. However, some come with photos of the painting recipients and their found art. This was from an Elvis impersonator from Australia who found a painting at Graceland in Memphis, Tennessee. <laughs> this is my other fave. A bride-to-be found a painting in Harvard Square and her family and friends, uh, prior to her wedding, and her family and friends used the painting for her wedding cake, her wedding reception, and one of the bridesmaids even shrunk it and placed it in a Barbie box. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> Just a few months after starting the street art project, I decided to give away paintings on a cold, gray, and icy February day in 2004 in Cambridge, where I live. I left a painting on a park bench, and immediately a young couple approached the bench. At first, I was concerned for the woman, because she was wearing these neon pink shades with almost pitch black lenses. 
I was worried that she wouldn't see the ice and that she would slip. But fortunately, the couple didn't have a hard time picking up the painting, and they walked off happily with their found art. I didn't hear back from them until spring of that year. They sent a message saying that they would like to meet me. A few days later, I heard a knock on the door, and when I opened the door, guess what? She was still wearing the same exact shades. <laughs> However, this time it was more appropriate. It was a nice, sunny spring day. She then hugged me, and then she removed her shades. I saw that a portion of her head was sort of caved in, the part that her shades were hiding. She told me that she and her husband found a painting during their first week of chemotherapy, and that it helped them deal with her illness and treatment. At this point, we were all crying. It was also then and there that I told myself that I will give away paintings no matter what. This is a still from a video message that this mom put together. The San Francisco Chronicle published a photo of her son picking up a painting at a BART station in San Francisco. Immediately after the story was published, the mom contacted me. Apparently, they've lost touch for about four years. She mentioned that her son had a mental breakdown, got into drugs, and that was how they lost communication. The newspaper story and painting reunited the mom and the son. The most intense feedback received to date came from a college student in the Midwest. He sent a message detailing the insurmountable challenges he was facing that school year and his thoughts about suicide. He told me that finding a painting on campus was one of the reasons why he didn't take his own life. This was a portion of his message. Wow. Never in my wildest dreams could I have imagined becoming a muralist let alone a full-time artist. As you may recall, I was a tech guy. My, my mural career started when schools began asking me to give presentations about my kindness slash pay it forward and non-graffiti form of street art. All my school-related murals are based on kids' drawings. What I do is I show them how to draw my characters, and then I take their drawings, then I paint them. And so in the end, the kids' artwork becomes part of the school's history slash legacy. Just like stories from people who find paintings, some of my mural painting experiences have also been really memorable. One particular one comes to mind. It was of this boy who could not stop watching me paint the school's mural. It all started when this teacher brought this entire class to observe the mural being painted. Believe it or not, that kid started to cut classes in order to see me paint. <laughs> that got him in trouble, but it did not stop him. At first, he just asked art-related questions, but eventually, he started to share his passion of becoming an ambulance driver. Yeah, I was impressed, but somewhat puzzled by his highly specific career choice, especially for his age. <laughs> But nevertheless, I encouraged him, you know, and, um, but unexpectedly, he tried to convince me to become an ambulance driver. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, hey, hey, you know, I already found my dream job, and I can't think of doing anything else. I didn't think much of our conversation, I just found it amusing. However, later on that week, I found out that his mother was a drug addict and that every month, sometimes every week, the ambulance would come and rescue his mom. The boy saw the ambulance drivers as his heroes, and he wanted to become one. To this day, I'm still in awe of that kid's capacity to find good in a really difficult situation. Since giving away the very first painting, the fall of 2003, this actual one on this slide, 
About 2,500 paintings have now been given away in all 50 states, including DC, <laughs> and in about 70 different countries around the world. Who would have thought that by thanking Boston that I would find my life's work? Kindness can truly be paid forward, and it comes back. Thank you.